Welcome to Catholic Views. I'm your host, Renee Kranz. On today's show, we have in the studio, John Hansen. He is the uh, representative, South Dakota representative for District 25. I have to make sure I get that right. You got it. <laughs> Welcome, John. Thank you. It's great to be with you. Yeah. He. Okay, so this is on January 4th, uh, Wednesday, right after a big snowstorm, and mm-hmm. John managed to inch his way down here. <laughs> Yes. He had some other meetings, so hours. they didn't come down here just for us, <laughs> yeah. but he made it. took it me down. hours just to get out of my driveway, <laughs> typical, but we made it. Typical of South Dakotans, yes. right? It's like, I'm going to get my get out of this driveway, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so John came in to talk to us about um, a petition that will be circulating uh, regarding an amendment that uh, a group would like to get on the South Dakota, for the Con- South Dakota Constitution mm-hmm. uh, regarding abortion. And so we wanted to have you come in and explain this to us because there's some, I'm going to say this, you don't, you aren't saying it. This is Renee Kranz saying this. I would say maybe a little bit of shady, at least not quite being super forthright about what it's about. So I agree with you completely. <laughs> You're right about that. Okay. So before we get into that, John, will you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up in politics? Sure. So I'm John Hansen. I'm from Del Rapids. I live in Dallas with my wife, Sheila. We have five kids. They're all 11 and under. So it's, it's a busy great. house. Yes, it's very busy. <laughs> Life is good. And we yeah. absolutely love it. Uh, so I got into politics, well, in large part because of the life issue. I think um, protecting unborn life is one of the most important, maybe the most important political issue mm-hmm. that we face as a culture, as a people, mm-hmm. um, because lives are literally at stake. Right. And so I got into politics primarily to defend innocent human life. So I've been doing it now. My first time I ever ran for office was in 2010. Okay. And got elected, served for a little while, left the legislature for a while, and now I've been back for another four years. Okay. So, um, you just I've, didn't get enough the first time. Huh? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. The work wasn't done. Right. And it's still not done. Right. So that's what brings me here. That's what brings me uh, to this issue. I just feel very convicted to uh, protect these unborn lives in our state. Yeah. You know, I have always felt like if we can't get the abortion thing right, then we might have a problem getting a lot of it, anything else right. That is so true. Yeah. I mean, life is the, the, the right to life is the first liberty after all. Yeah. Without that, nothing else matters because right. there is no life. Right. So, um, and I understand you had a conversion because uh, you did not grow up Catholic. Is that right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And you had a conversion when you were in high school? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I grew up Lutheran and the sort of the rule in our household was like, you do confirmation and once you're done with confirmation, it's kind of all over. You can check out, no more obligation, anything like that. So that's what I did. So I got done with confirmation and I was just like, all right, I've done my time. I'm done. I've done my time. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so then fast forward a little bit, I ended up meeting my then girlfriend, now wife, Sheila. She was Catholic. And so for a while we were dating and, um, she just started inviting me to go to mass with her. Long story short, um, I, You know, I still remember the first time I walked into the Catholic Church in Del Rapids and felt the presence of the Eucharist, and there was just something different about that Mm -hmm. experience that I'd never experienced before. So I went on a faith journey at that point, started going back to the Lutheran Church to just say, like, okay, well, you know, my whole family's Lutheran, basically. I don't want to abandon that. Right, right. um, Just out of hand. So let's pray and learn about, you know, all the things that I was supposed to be learning about Mm -hmm. prior to this point. And uh, eventually I discerned uh, that the Catholic Church was the one true church, and here we are. Mm-hmm. Good. I like your wife already. I've never met her, but I like her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds like a good woman. Um, okay, She's good. Awesome. So awesome. um, let's talk about this amendment to the state constitution. The, the, there is a petition circulating starting, it, that just started a few weeks ago. They started right? in November. In November. Yeah, okay, yeah, November. so sooner than I thought. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about what this amendment is and what it would do if it is put on the ballot and passes? Yeah, so this amendment really represents the biggest unborn, the biggest threat to unborn life that I can really imagine, certainly since the passage or enactment of Roe versus Wade. Mm-hmm. So just to back up a little bit, when Roe versus Wade was overturned not that long ago, our state's trigger law went into effect. Okay. And with that law, our state ceased abortions. There's mm-hmm. no more abortions happening in the state of South Dakota mm-hmm. because of our trigger law, very pro-life law that was enacted right. a while back. 
That's the status of the law right now. But there is this amendment that's being circulated. The petitions are being circulated today. If that amendment is placed on our ballot and passed into our state constitution, that will legalize all abortion through all nine months of pregnancy. Not only that, it would override all of our state's current, really bipartisan, common sense, pro-life bills that we've enacted in the past. So right. like things like basic things like parental notification laws, mm -hmm. if a minor child is trying to undergo an abortion, or things like prohibitions on taxpayer funding of abortions, mm -hmm. things that are just like wildly popular, even with a lot of moderate pro-choicers, those sorts of things would be overridden. So it really is, it, it's about as extreme and as radical as I can imagine. And they're circulating for signatures right now to place this on the uh, 2024 ballot. Right, because this, this, so this is not just a, oh, we'd be going back to what Roe was. It is not that. Good point. Yeah. yeah. And that's what they try to say. Right. I mean, that's one of their main talking points is that we just want to codify Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. Well, under Roe versus Wade in South Dakota, we were able to prohibit, let's say, late term abortions. Right. They were prohibited in our state. And we we're able to enact those common sense bipartisan uh, pro-life laws like parental consent laws, like prohibitions on taxpayer funding of abortions like conscience protections for medical professionals mm -hmm. so they can mm -hmm. be forced into... That's really important. Yeah, it definitely is. In fact, that, those were some of the most early laws that were passed after Roe versus Wade mm -hmm. was, in, was decided by the Supreme Court was just to make sure that a doctor or a nurse can't be compelled into performing an abortion against right. their will. Even those would be overridden. So to say that this is just enacting Roe versus Wade into our state constitution, it's wrong and it's seriously dishonest. Right, right. And I know um, when you when you were first started talking about that, uh, what this does, you mentioned that right now uh, abortion is illegal in our state. And I can I can always hear uh, one of the arguments right away is, well, what about if a woman's life is in danger right now? Well, now you correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I understand it is, if a woman's life is in danger, you can always save the life of the woman without performing an actual abortion. The, the child may not survive whatever is happening, but um, because abortion is legal does not mean that women will die because there's a problem. That's exactly right. And in fact, in our trigger law, there's a specific provision right. to make sure that the, mother, that the mother's life is always protected. Right. right. The mother is treated for whatever is happening. Yep. So, yeah, I think that's something very important to clarify that because that's probably going to be something that you might hear from petitioners, from uh, petition holders and so on. So, okay, how did this amendment come about or this, this thing come about? Because this doesn't sound like a very South Dakota thing, to be honest. Most of us are fairly conservative. Not everybody, but most of us are. And I think it's a more pro-life state than not. So how did this come here? Yeah, well, there's some national groups um, that are pushing this around the country. Mm -hmm. This whole idea that we're going to codify Roe versus Wade. And a group in South Dakota called the Cotons for Health. Uh, picked up on that, you know, I, I, the Cotons for Health is in and of itself is a misleading term. Yes. There's nothing healthy. There's nothing medicinal about abortion. Abortion is the termination of a human right. life. Nonetheless, this organization is called the Cotons <laughs> for Health. Right. And uh, they picked this up and now they're running with it in South Dakota uh, to change our constitution. The, the organization is run by Rick Weiland, who's been around for a long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. in sort of liberal politics in our state. And this is just his latest effort. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. So if if this is codified in the Constitution, I think something that's important to understand, it's not something that the governor or the legislature can block if it passes. Like, it's <clears throat> there. That's true. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people think, okay, well, maybe it could use some tweaks. Right. You know, there's definitely some language in this amendment that it's unclear, the terms mm -hmm. aren't defined, it's like, well, who gets to decide that? Yeah. Well, maybe the legislature can uh, write a definition or maybe the governor can do something to bring clarity. That's not true. Once this is written into our constitution, the legislature can't do a thing about it. The governor mm -hmm. can't do a thing about it. The only way to fix this would be to go back and amend the state constitution right. again, which is obviously a very difficult thing to mm -hmm. do. So if this is written into our state constitution, you know, we lived under Roe versus Wade for 49 years. Right. And if this is written into our state constitution, you know, Lord only knows how long right. we would we would live under this. Yeah. But 
I hope that never comes to pass because once it's in there, it's very hard to undo Mm -hmm. and we could have it for a long time in our state. Right. And that's countless lives lost. Absolutely. Um, If you're just joining us, uh, we are talking to John Hansen. He is a South Dakota representative from the District 25 about uh, an abortion petition that will be cir- that is circulating currently in South Dakota for an amendment regarding abortion. So, John, can you tell us a little bit of specifics about this? Like, what would it do? I know there's, there are a few different, um, like, they're trying to bring it back to a trimester framework, I mm-hmm. understand. So, can you describe what's happening with this amendment uh, exactly? Yeah. So, you're right. It's broken down into three paragraphs. Right. It's not that long, really. And so the first paragraph says that in the first trimester, the state may not regulate the pregnant woman's abortion decision and its effectuation, which must be left to the judgment of the pregnant woman. Well, effectuation is not defined. Right. But if you look at just the general definition of effectuation, that means to to bring about or to cause something to come about. And so really what that is saying when it says the state may not regulate a pregnant woman's abortion decision and its effectuation or your ability to bring about, that's a complete prohibition on any state regulation right. whatsoever, like we were talking about. So in the first trimester, which is when most abortions uh, tragically take place, mm-hmm. um, you're going to have unlimited abortion with the state having no regulation no regulation authority whatsoever to right. do anything about it. Right. Uh, the second trimester allows for regulations only related to the physical health of the pregnant mother. Okay, well, let's think about what that means. Physical health of the pregnant woman would be something like, I don't know, maybe um, ensuring that the abortion is done by a a licensed physician in some sort of inspected Mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. Well, you can only enact those sorts of regulations in the second trimester. You can't even have (laughs) those in the the first first trimester. That's how extreme that this is. Then we get into the third trimester. That says that you can regulate or prohibit abortion, except, and this is a big exception, and it's undoubtedly an exception that's written so that Planned Parenthood can drive a bus through. Yeah. Right. Except when abortion is necessary in the medical judgment of the woman's physician to preserve the life or health of the pregnant woman. Right. Well, what does health mean? Health isn't defined. Right. In the second paragraph related to the second trimester, that talks about physical health. Mm-hmm. This doesn't say physical health. This just says health. Right. So you look at like rules of statutory construction, you read that. Well, they must be meaning something broader than just physical health, Mm -hmm. if they don't say physical health in this third paragraph. Well, that can include things like mental health, Mm -hmm. anxiety, depression, suicide ideation, things that um, sadly aren't always that uncommon with some pregnancies. Right. In fact, you even read some of Planned Parenthood's literature. They'll say that it's more risky for a mother to be pregnant than it is to undergo an abortion procedure. So... The important point in all of this is who actually gets to decide. Mm -hmm. Well, the medical judgment of the woman's physician is what's written in the constitutional provision. Well, who's the woman's physician in this context? A Planned Parenthood abortionist. Oh, of course. And so there you can see through all nine months of pregnancy, you have legalized abortion. Even the most horrific late-term abortions are legalized in this constitutional amendment. It's really that radical. Right, right. Okay, so let's get to the uh, petition now. So people may have seen already some people. Uh, I, I don't think I've seen any yet. Have you Good. seen any, John? Yeah, we've seen some. Uh, okay, yep, so there will be people out. Uh, we're all familiar with this. You might be walking in the grocery store and someone mm-hmm. will have a clipboard and, and asking you to sign a petition to get something on the ballot. And many times a lot of us are like, well, it doesn't hurt to get something on the ballot. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, That is one of the most common arguments that they'll make is Mm -hmm. this is just, it's it's not even you supporting it. It's just putting it on the ballot. Well, of course, if you think about that for a second, what you're doing is is getting that amendment one step closer Mm -hmm. to passage because that's the first step. So by you signing that petition, that's putting that amendment on the ballot, which is one step closer to being written into the Constitution. So it is advancing that amendment. Mm -hmm. They'll say that it's not, but it definitely is. Yeah, we've seen these people out on the streets right now. In fact, um, we just got a photo not that long ago of a table of some petition circulators. And they had a sign that was taped on the side of their table. And it said three things on the sign. At the bottom of the sign, it said pro-choice. At the top of the sign, it said pro-life and pro-family. So... 
Their petition circulars are literally out there saying that this is a pro-life, pro-family measure and enticing people to sign this petition. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that, not just in this circulation effort, but in others too. Sadly, these circulators aren't always that honest right. when they're circulating their petition. Right. And that's a perfect example. For them to say that this is pro-life and pro-family is obviously dishonest. Mm -hmm. There's nothing pro-life or pro-family about aborting innocent human beings in the womb, especially horrific late-term abortions. Right, right. But that's what they're doing, and that's what they're saying. In fact, I've, I've heard from people who, um, in fact, one person was a moderate, she described herself as a moderate pro-choice Democrat. And she was on the street, like you described, mm -hmm. and she was approached by somebody. They asked, would you like to sign this petition? She said, yes, she signed it. Later on, she had been speaking with her neighbor, and her neighbor had learned more about mm -hmm. this constitutional mm -hmm. amendment. And the neighbor explained, no, this is really what this does. And she was shocked. She couldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah. And so then she was reaching out to us and told us this story and said, what can I do to get my name off of this petition? If, if I would have known, even as a, as a moderate pro-choice person, if I would have known how extreme this is, mm -hmm. there's no way I would have signed that petition, but mm -hmm. they didn't tell me and I didn't know. Right. So that's why it's so important for pro-lifers, for people of faith, really just to, to let people know about how radical and extreme this amendment is so that people know not to sign this petition. Yeah, I agree. Um, so with that petition and with any petition, as a responsible voter... What should we do when someone approaches us with any petition, really? Because a lot of the petitioners aren't fully clear on what they're asking either. True. That's true. <laughs> Every petitioner is required to have a copy of the language of what they're circulating. Mm -hmm. And so I would say at the very least, if, if you're interested in having that conversation with that circulator and maybe signing on to something, at the very least, you should read what they're actually circulating. It's not enough just to go off of what they're telling you right. because we've seen too many times they're just not fully honest. Right. I mean, you can bet that you can go up to one of these petition circulators right now. They're not going to tell you that this legalizes abortion through right. nine months of pregnancy. Right. They're not going to tell you that it overrides our state's current bipartisan common sense abortion regulations. Mm -hmm. They're just not. Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to know that is if you read it and understand it. And so at the very minimum, you should take a moment to have them hand you a copy of the language and read through it. And then, you know, if you're still not sure, don't sign it. Right. Period. Right. If you want to learn more about it, you can go on the Secretary of State's website, you can look up the language, and you can decide for yourself. But signing that petition, like we said, is putting that one step closer to being on the ballot, which is then one step closer to being into our law. So it's a very important thing that we should take more seriously than, than a lot of people do right now. Yeah, and I think we shouldn't assume that because we're in South Dakota, we're mostly pro-life that this will never happen here because it is happening in other states that are mostly pro-life and mostly conservative. Michigan, I believe Kansas, yep. um, places where you wouldn't expect that to happen. And we, <laughs> we don't want to go into this fight again. So if you can spread the word, that's good. That's exactly right. Yeah. And you're right. We shouldn't take our, the fact that I, I believe that the people of South Dakota are pro-life. Right. And they've shown it over and over again. But... When this thing, if it gets on the ballot, they're going to have millions of dollars that mm -hmm. flow into this state. And if they advertise their measure, like they're advertising their petitions, like saying that it's pro-life and pro-family, right. that might confuse a lot of people. Yes. And you might get a lot of pro-life people who otherwise are pro-life who wouldn't support this thing to vote for it because they just don't understand. Mm -hmm. they don't, they're not fully informed. That's why we need to take it upon ourselves to really let people know. Right, right. There is a some particular language that they're using when they're talking about this, that it will, something about that it will help with regulating abortion. How are they saying that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, that, that, that goes... That seems confusing. Right. Yeah. That goes back to the Attorney General's explanation. Oh, yes. um, when the Attorney General originally wrote the explanation for this ballot measure, um the, the, the first explanation draft was pretty confusing. Mm -hmm. And the, the uh, explanation then said that this would set up a regulatory framework. That's what it was, yes. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, r related to abortion. Mm -hmm. The reality was this doesn't just establish a framework. It completely wipes out our current state's framework right. and enacts a new, very pro-choice abortion up-to-birth framework. Right. 
So fortunately, that language was changed、Good. in the explanation. That's important too because the explanation is actually what appears not only when the petitioner is circulating the、mm-hmm. petition, the AG's explanation is on the petition there, but it's on the ballot. Right. So we need to make sure that that was closer to accurate. Fortunately, the attorney general made some modifications, and the the explanation is better now because right, of it. Right. Right.、Yeah. Um, John, we have about a minute. I know that you、uh, have a group,、mm-hmm. something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forget what it's called. Can you just tell us a little bit about that and how people can learn more、yes. about this? Yes. Yes. So we started、uh, me and Leslie Anru, who's a longtime pro life、mm-hmm. advocate.、Uh, you maybe heard her name. She's、um, pretty well known in the Sioux Falls area among pro lifers. We started a ballot question committee under South、yeah. Dakota law to push back against this abortion up to birth constitutional amendment. That is called the Life Defense Fund,、mm-hmm. and so through the Life Defense Fund, we've really been sort of taking a、um, the lead in in making sure that we are educating people as much as possible.、Mm-hmm. So right now, we've printed up some flyers, and it's just a flyer that looks like this. You can print them off yourself, or we've got oh, very、some. nice. Okay, and、um, they're called declines to sign flyers, and so that's really sort of our message right now, is just to let people know, hey. Declined to sign South Dakota's radical abortion petition, and on the back it just sets forth some of the reasons why. A lot、sure. of the reasons that we've been talking about、sure. already today. So, where can、uh, they find that? Th- this、you. is on our website, lifedefensefund.com. Okay, and、uh, you can sign up there、uh, to get more information to help volunteer. We really need people to、uh, go on our Facebook page as well.、Mm-hmm. Uh, because we've been working a lot to sort of educate people and get the word out there. So like us on Facebook, Life De- Life Defense Fund.、Uh, go to the website lifedefensefund dot com and sign up. And、uh, please, we need volunteers. Yes, it's up to us. We can keep South Dakota a pro life state, but it's going to take pro lifers、yep. to actually get active and involved. I'll tell you right now, a lot of pro lifers are are kind of asleep. Right. I was just gonna say we can't. It's not over. Right. It's not, not over. <laughs> over. It's only in a way. It's only just begun.、Mm-hmm. The Supreme Court returned the question back to the states and、mm-hmm. its people, and that's an obligation on us now. Yeah. And so, if we're gonna keep South Dakota a pro-life state, it's gonna take the pro-lifers to wake up, to get involved, and to help defeat this constitutional yep. amendment. Yep. Totally agree. John, we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming in and telling us about this. That、um, lifedefensefund dot com. Visit that website. Go check him out and、uh, see how you can help because we really want to keep this out of our state. You bet. Thanks a lot, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. If you haven't found us on、uh, social media yet, you can find us at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Rumble, all at SF Diocese anytime. That's it for us today. Hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic views.